And that link to the YouTube video is in the email that I send out every week in the very bottom. There's a little tiny red arrow YouTube icon. If you click on that, it'll take us to our YouTube page. page and there are dozens of past recordings on there. Okay, so anyway, we are talking about Quartinarius tonight. Put a link in there to the Wikipedia page that has a pretty good uh, synopsis of it. Uh, just to get everybody on the same page here, I'll just read the very first paragraph out of that Wikipedia article. It says here, Quartinarius is a globally distributed genus of mushrooms in the family Quartinariaceae. It is suspected to be the largest genus of agarics, which are gilled mushrooms, containing over 2,000 species. A common feature among all species in the genus Quartinarius is that the young specimens have a cortina, also known as a veil, between the cap and the stem, hence the name meaning curtained. Most of the fibers of the cortina are ephemeral and will leave no trace once gone except for the limited remnants on the stems or cap edge in some species. All have a rusty brown spore print. Common names, cortinar and web cap refer to members of the genus. Uh, due to the danger, uh, and then it goes into talking about uh, edibility here, which uh, general quaternaries are not well regarded as an edible. Some of them are considered uh, pretty poisonous. All right. So, Sorry, I'm a little bit distracted because somebody's banging on my window. I gotta go to let somebody in my front door. <laughs> anyway, that's the gist of uh, Quartinarius. Um, just a very, very, very broad uh, explanation of it. Um, again, it's a massive genus. Um, what we're gonna do tonight is I have, uh, I know Hervé said he has a few to share. Um, if there's other people who would like to share Quartinarius observations, uh, type your name into the chat and we will, I'll call on you in that order. And I have uh, emails from a few people. And then after we go through and look at the people, the ones that people have sent me, I'm gonna go into some stuff that Dave sent me. Dave has sent, uh, put together quite a number of Quartinarius observations that he has uh, cataloged in the different um, subgroups, the sub, uh, I'll let him explain it because I really don't understand it. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna start with Hervé. Hervé, go ahead and uh, share your screen and show us what you have. Okay. Uh, start the window. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay, I'm going to show you something on the iNaturalist. How come I don't see anything here? Hmm. It seems my window has frozen. What's going on? Maybe stop sharing and try again. Okay, here it comes. Okay, I found that today uh, in Rutgers Gardens under a log. I don't see anything. Kind of... I don't see anything yet, Harvey. Oh, oh, let's try to share again. Are, they, are these quaternarius, Hervé? No, no, no. It has to be quaternarius. Well, we were trying to study quaternarius. I was going to suggest that maybe next week we do a member's find. And uh, Okay, uh, all right. So I maybe I'll show that next week. Yeah, because we have a lot of quaternarius to cover tonight. Why don't we save this for next week? Because um, I think next week we might actually have some stuff to look at after this little bit of warm okay. weather. No problem. Okay, I'm going to quit, right? Uh, yeah. Unless, if you have like just one minute to tell me what this is. Oh, all right, well, go ahead. Anybody have a guess? That was under a log. Well, it looks Not pretty interesting. To... Not should exposed be... to light. Should be a good discussion about this next week. 
Okay. Gymnopolis. I don't think this is orange sport. I don't think that Gymnopolis would come out now anyway. Flamulina, Mycena, I don't know. Looks pretty interesting. Okay, I'll show you it next week, okay? Get, get a sport print if you can. Yeah, get a sport size. print color if you can. Okay, I don't know if I can retrieve it. Okay. All right, so um, no, I don't know how to unshare. Ah, oh, I don't see the button anymore. There you go. Okay, leave. No, it's not leave. Okay, that's it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. And, um, you know, I forgot to make an announcement. So, um, Dorothy Small, on, this is a small, uh, deviation from our court and areas discussion. Um, Dorothy Smolin asked me to announce that she is doing a um, paper making workshop this weekend. It says she is teaching a paper making, mushroom paper making workshop this Saturday at the Sherman Hoffman uh, that's an Audubon Center in Bernardsville from 12.30 to 3.30. And you have to register before Thursday. Um, she said there was a fee. But she did ask me to share that with this group because I think there might be some people that might be interested in that. So I will put that link in there. And if anybody wants to sign up, you can. Okay, so let me start here. Let me start with Brandon. Okay, I will go in the order here that I received these. Brandon, are you ready to uh, talk about your quaternaries? Yep, I'm here. Okay, so here's your your two that you have in, in Dermosity. All right, so yeah, I mean, I know we're not, probably going to get this anywhere beyond Dermosopy, but I'm comparing it to uh, Cratius, and I know there is some conjecture whether Cratius even occurs here in the U.S., um, but I've ruled out a couple that it could potentially be. Um, so I don't think it's any of the long, longer stemmed or longer yellow stiped dermosopes, such as Pitcanensis. I've ruled that one out. Um, this has no red bruising on any parts when handled or when the gills were damaged. And can do you know why did you put in dermosopy? Uh, only because it was being compared to Bracius in one conversation. Uh, Cratius, I'm sorry. And that was in Dermosopy. Do you mean Crocius? C R O C I U S or something? Yes, yeah, C R O C E U S. Uh, hey, man, I'm sorry, I uh, I missed. Uh, where did you find uh, this uh, thing? I found this. It was growing with pine. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. Marlton. It was in, yeah, it was in Marlton Black Run Preserve. Marlton. Okay, so this is just outside of the Pine Barrens. Right. Okay. So, so still, still very sandy soil, though. Yeah. Here's the thing. I uh, there's been this thing going on that uh, kind of expanded uh, much farther than I thought it would have. It would have. Um, Liz Broderick found this crocius-like thing growing in the pine barrens, and we got it sequenced. And to our amazement, its sequence was completely identical to the thing we called semi-sanguineous with red gills, except that that mushroom looked more like yours. Okay. Oh, wow. So 
Jean Lodge, who is a retired professor from, I think, Tennessee, ah. um, you might have heard of her. Um, she's running, you know, this program with Fundus, and I got involved, you know, with my project and Dave's project as well, sequencing project. And uh, she emailed some very competent people about Cortinarius, and they're scratching their heads because they cannot explain how this crustus like thing can have an identical sequence to the semi-sanguineous mushroom, which actually is not semi-sanguineous. I think it's called tinctorum. That's the theory that's floating around. We don't have semi-sanguineous in the United States, apparently. But that's not a story. So your mushroom looks more like that thing, which is giving us headaches. Right. And do you know if uh, cinnamomius, is that a synonym for crocious? Uh, I don't know, but no, it's I... Not, no, it's not it's a not. synonym. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. the, Pseudomonium the, the, has orange gills. Crocius has gills that tend to be um, sort of yellowish mustard colored. There's also Crocioconius, but that this is not that because that one has an umbo. Right. Now, the Canadians uh, just about a year ago published a, uh, a vast study of their Cortinarius. Okay. It's a, it's a document that's 400 pages long. It's basically a book. It's in wow. French, but there's a PDF and I cannot send it because it's 40 megabytes, you know, in size, but you can download it from, from a website. I can forward you the link and you can basically look at phylogenetic trees and scroll down to look at the text and copy and paste the text and get the Google translate. You know, Google translate works very well now. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind putting that link somewhere or emailing it to me, that would be I'll awesome. mail it to you. Um, yeah. uh, some people already may have it here, you know, who are present at the uh, at this uh, taxonomy Tuesday. But I will forward it to you personally. Okay, great. I well, think it's you. the most competent reference on quaternaries in the United States. Right. Can you put the link in the chat? Well, I have to find it. Uh, I'm on my other computer. I'm on my Chromebook and all the files and uh, uh, literature is on the other computer. I have to find it first. Um, Igor, Igor, I sent it. I sent the, a link to Luke, but I'm not sure it's good that it's going to be possible to share because the link actually has my name in it. So it might be one of these things that only I'm able to open I don't, on my computer. I don't know. But that's what I used to try to organize um, my quaternarius observations. And in fact, this Quebec thing is an attempt to reorganize genus quaternarius along the lines of phylogeny rather than uh, morphology. Well, that's what I said. You know, there are yeah. massive yeah. phylogenetic trees in there. So there yeah, yeah, it's all based on trees, right? And, yeah. and interestingly, interestingly um, a lot of the old classifications still seem to hold up pretty well um i mean there's some stuff that seems to be different but later, later we'll get into that later but yes yeah, cinnamomius and there's another one what is it malachorius or malice something that that also looks a little like this but malice there are a couple I other ones excuse me malice malice Ibe. Yeah, no, there's another one though, too. There's like Malaquarius or something. Oh, that's sorry. There's, yeah, there's, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah there's two M A L I ones uh, that, I, that I mix up. Um, but um, also, there, there are two other uh, um, species that are in, in the Quebec study that look like semi sanguineous. There's Phonesius, and then there's this other one that it's it's really hard to say and i can't remember how to say it it starts with p but is it's it in that it's in that Quebec study but they have but they all have red gills you know they all have those red red gills and so that would still be an interesting thing for these to be one of those but the reason why i'm bringing this up is because there might be sequences in genbank that are posted as semi sanguineous and actually represent one of these other three species, the, the one that Igor mentioned, Tinctorium. Um, and then there's these other two that both of them start with P. I'm not sure about the P, but there was one called Incognitus. And that oh, one is yeah. it's probably a misnomer because Incognitus in uh, uh, the Michael Quebec study actually is related to Croceus. Now, I found oh. the 
link to the PDF. It's from ResearchGate, okay? So I'm actually putting it in the chat so everyone can uh, copy and paste it into their own thing. So Brandon, oh, you can see right awesome. now. Very yeah, good, perfect. very good, Eager. Yeah, I didn't yeah. find that. I didn't run across that one that starts with yeah. I in cognitive. Yeah, that in sounds like a pretty, I mean, if that one has been confused with Croesus, then that sounds like a candidate for this. But but the the incognitus yeah, the incognitus it's, of... it's based off of uh, unconfirmed uh, genealogy, I believe, is what I read about that earlier. There are only two sequences of incognitus in GenBank, and one of them is from Michael Quebec. The other one is from Brandon Matheny. They are not the same. Okay, so mm -hmm. Matheny. The sequence from Athene is the one that we have, the one that matches Tinctorum and Semisanguineus. All right, so this is this is a big head scratcher. Nobody can explain why it is the way it is. Yeah, can I? Can People I? People suggested it could be maybe a um, um, uh, a variant with just different uh, 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 gill color, but I doubt that's the case. Yeah, I just want to read this one little quip from uh, Shannon on the NA Quartz dot com website which if you haven't been there is a pretty good little resource for quaternarius um but it says that there hasn't been a detailed comparison of quaternarius crocius or cinnamomius and uh pitcanensis but the effort is most likely pointless since there are numerous thermosophy on the spectrum from olive yellow to citron to okra and we don't have good records of confirmed collections so i mean it's well, up in there. He, he's partially right, but to your, you know, for your information, uh, uh, a sequence of a Crocius neotype or uh, epitype is available in GenBank. So that that thing is nailed. We know cool. what Crocius is, you know, apparently. Cool. And Luke, you had mentioned in the beginning, is is that correct? It is in Dermosopy, right? I was just. Um, I think so. I, I I'm not really very good at. Cro Crocius is in Dermosophy. All all the ones that have been discussed so far are in Dermosophy. The only other thing I would think might apply would be Leprosybe, but I don't I don't think that that it is. That looks like a Dermosophy to me. Dermosophy is being usually what uh, dry, all the way around, and some sort of color dry, um, silky on the cap a lot of times. Colorful gills, uh, red, yellow, green, usually. I think I also read somewhere about uh, like dual cortinas, uh, secondary cortina in dermosopies. Oh, I you know, I think somebody brought that up a, a while back. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, kind of once again, Which I don't think. Is this? This is Duran and second Dermosity. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I'm not sure if this is Sanguinius actual or if it is, it doesn't look right for Sanguinius to me. No, we have a name for this. It just transpired maybe a few months ago. Dave knows this, I think, right? Dave? Is, it, is it the root? I've, I've been calling this sanguineous, actually. And even though I said a while back that I thought we didn't have sanguineous, then I started looking on sources and finding out that, you know, like on, on Champignon du Quebec, they have sanguineous. Um, it's not Harrisonii because that one has yellow on the base. Okay, so Maryland, maybe... Meant... Maryland Densis? That's what I was Maryland, wondering. Maryland, Maryland Densis. Densis also has a little bit of, I mean, uh, uh, less red stipe, I thought. Uh huh. Well, this could be just waterlogged, and when tissue yeah. absorbs water, it changes the color. So that's also true. Yeah. But that stipe looks pretty uniformly sort of purplish red. Yeah, Not well, like it's probably just absorb the water. Okay. Just the like one thing I do want to point out is that the cortina, the, the remnant there, <clears throat> yellow orangish yellow yeah yeah you see the yeah. yellow there on the upper part of the stock there yep yeah uh that that's probably going to be really helpful if, if you want to and and from what try. i was reading that doesn't really fit sanguineous uh -huh. smithy eye uh smithy eye is another one, right? or harrisonii so 
I'm, I'm not sure on this one. I'm looking at uh, Michael Quo's pictures of Marilyn Densis, and his are pretty red all the way through. What's wrong with that one? I think Sanguinius is a free species for weed. I just, I, I just I posted um, 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 an observation of Harrisonia from MO, and I think the idea is by a person who knows their cortinariuses. Um, so you can take a look at that if you want to compare. Cool. Okay, so you have cortinarius section mixasium, or maybe a genomus, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Brandon, did you happen to keep that red mushroom? I did not. Ah. No, nope. I mean, I, I kept I kept it and played around, put it in some uh, water and dyed the water red, but that was about it. Yeah, well, I was going to say dyers would kill for that mushroom. All right. Is it worth saving if you only have two or three mushrooms like that? Yes, because you accumulate them over the summer. Right over the years until you get enough to actually do something with it. Believe me, I've done that. I never see that up here. Do you want us to send them to you if we find them? Oh, you're muted. Or make a, 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 a combine your collections and, and if you have anybody in the club who currently does dying, yeah, yep. I'd love to have them. But um, Liz was the only person I knew of who was a serious dyer. Aside Ursula, Ursula, I'm sure, doesn't do too much anymore. OK, so tell us about this one, Brandon. Uh, um, uh, Ursula's going to do a dying workshop um, the end of May, May 28th. There we go. Thanks. And Nina, is that going to be open, or is it going to be limited, do you think? Um, it's going to be limited, um, gotcha. and it's going to be a charge, but not very much. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and then, yeah, so I, right off the bat, I think uh, this is a quaternarius, right? It's not a gym. Uh, that looks like, I think you got it right. Yeah. This looks like, uh, what is it, Mycasium? Is that how you say it? That's, it's one of the ones that starts up yeah. slimy yeah. all over. Yeah, slimy, right. Yeah, and then it dries up, but the, it, I think you got this. Pine yeah. barrens? Right. Uh, no, I believe uh, actually go to the location real quick i think this was black run as well yeah black run preserve yep yeah, close enough. yeah when i was in the pine barrens this fall i saw when i what looked like these or if it wasn't this it was something similar and there were a lot of i i was calling it mucosis that's what i'm leaning towards right now but actually now that i'm looking at it would you call that margin white No. Well, uh, that might that might be a. Oh, you mean the margin of the cap or the gills? Uh, the the cap. Uh, it looks a it's, little lighter, but uh, I wouldn't call it white. Because that was one of the big differentiators between some of the sections that I was looking at. Uh, I think Lanagari, Lanagari I was one of them, which is a section, but that's differentiated by a white cap margin as opposed to the Myxaceum, which has a kind of fading to yellow, just not quite white cap margin. Well, I think with the Myxaceum, it's just, the ones that are slimy all over that they're going to go in there and that's and this quebec thing seems to support this this morphological distinction uh, the phylogeny seems to provide support and then I, I will say just on that note uh, uh section vibratalis also contains from what i saw a good amount of viscous capped quaternarius as well yeah, that's well. That's probably a section within Mike Sacium, and 
I'm not sure okay. what terminology the Quebec people were using because some of the words won't translate with Google. Um, right. and I feel like it looked to me like sections inside sections. So yep. I started calling them subgenera with sections. So the other thing you said would, would have been a section. And there's so many sections listed on the Quebec study. It's 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 really I'm I'm not using any of the names yet. There's too many of them. So Mike said subgenus Mycetium sounds good to me for, right. for that one. And there's another one. What is it? Oh uh, wait, Trivi Trivialis Trivialis. Trivialis. Yeah. That's another one to check. Yeah. So but I think the, that one has like a scaly stock. One of the things with Trivialis is that it has um, a lilac kind of scaly stock, more of a lilac coloration. I don't, I don't know. I don't think that's one of the lilac ones. That would be um, um, colonitis. I've got I've got a few pictures of those with with the okay. there's like three of them that have purple light purple lilac kind of stocks. Yeah, one um, of I don't think Trivialis is one of them actually. Oh, but there's okay. probably a lack of agreement on some of this stuff, to be honest. There's quite a few of them that have a lot of purple in the stem end cap, light, light lavender. This was more of a um, with colonitis. It, it was more colon, like colonitis. A, yes, colonitis yeah, is one it, of them. It, yeah, the descriptor isn't actually the coloration in the stipe. It's like a um, uh, like a gelatinous almost uh, film on the stipe. Yeah, it's hard to tell whether it's actually the, the slime or the ground color of the stipe that's li lilac. Uh, so he, what he's talking about are these really slimy ones that most of them have brown or yellow caps, uh, but they have these purple stipes. Um, I have lots of slimy ones up here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but most of the slimy ones don't have purple caps. Oh, except for iodes and iod iodiodes, or however you say it. Iodioides. Iodio. Oh God, what what you said, right? <laughs> All right, you guys want to look at this cabaretus? That they're yeah, calling let's a, look. At they're calling goat's hat because I think people don't like the name gypsy mushroom anymore. They consider it to, uh, the word gypsy derogatory, so people are trying to get away from it. I wanted to at least send one that we hopefully can all agree on. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I would say so. Definitely. It's a yeah. good edible. It's the only Cortinarius I eat. And I think one of these next few photos show a really cool decoration between the veil and the gills. Kind of that like speckled pattern. This is what this uh, this bloom, the bloom, and then there's kind of a, a bit of a corrugation going on here. That's what always helps me identify this mushroom. That's, yeah, that's, it's one of the few quartz that leaves a membranous ring. Yeah, see that it's not so really. So does this thing actually? Does this have a cortina to start out? I, I would think probably not. It's got like a membrane probably. I'm yeah, I don't think so. I, when, when it gets to my turn, I have a picture, a photograph of them in like multiple stages of their life. We can look at that. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, because I don't no, think it does. Yeah, no bulb. Because it when I pulled it out and I didn't know what this was, Luke, you showed me a caparatus one time briefly. And when I pulled this out, I figured there would be a bulb on it. Hmm. By, by the way, I found more of these last fall than I have found in 20 years combined leading up to this last year. And most of them in oak woods, of all things. They're supposedly they like conifers, but. Yeah, you know, I, I, I was always under the impression they like conifers too, but then. A friend of mine tells me that she finds them in their hardwood plantations in Pennsylvania. Or she's a nursery person. And she says they show up in their hardwood plantations all the time. Yeah, That's I was what, finding so them where there's a lot of oak and maybe maybe a hemlock here and there. But it seemed like in the oak spots. Hmm. Uh, before this year, 
this past year, I would find them usually where there's some hemlock. Right, and we I always, always found them in the Pine Barrens when I was in New Jersey this I, fall. We found I say them we, we always find them in the Pine Barrens, but you can't really tell whether they're with the conifer or with the oaks there. Right. So, all right, cool. Well, thanks, Brandon. Yeah, thank you, guys. So, let's see. So, so let's look at yours. All right, I'm here. So you guys can see the name is up here in the upper corner. Yeah, this is a, a Cortinarius that everybody watching should be able to recognize. And it's really, really common in New Jersey, uh, especially in the Northern counties. I remember it particularly from Stokes State Forest, but I'm sure it's in a whole lot of places and even down in Hunterdon County, um, Cortinarius armillatus. The orange bands are what uh, around the st uh, stem. And plus, it very often has an en enormously huge bulbous base, which is very much under the ground or under the duff. Anyway, it's a cool mushroom. It's it's and it also has that sort of shoulder cap umbo that's uh, very easy to recognize. Very distinct color. Um, it, I'm sure in some books it's listed as edible, but I don't eat any areas. I ate it once. It tastes like dirt. It's really, it's not any good. Did you get sick? Time ago I tried it. Yeah, it doesn't, I thought it didn't taste good. Sue, do you, do you find this always with birch or with other trees? Well, there's a lot of birch in the places I do find it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, you can see by this picture, there's a lot of pine needles too. I see that, yeah. Pine needles. So that's kind of our common trees up here, are the white birch, the white pine, the hemlock, uh, uh, balsam fir, some of the spruces. So spruce fir plus the white pine. Anyway, when it comes up, it comes up in the hundreds. I mean, you can see it. I didn't have to go more than 10 feet to gather enough here to make this picture. It's just unbelievable, like a weed. So anyway, that's a mushroom that's easy, a uh, uh, Cortinarius that's pretty easy to recognize if, uh, and I know it's real common in New Jersey. Okay, now this is one that is not so common to me. It used to turn up on the nymph forays. The most distinctive feature on this is a funny kind of yellowy green gills. Um, and then the stem has some bluish tones on it, um, on the inside. It's a really strange kind of quaternarius, but once you turn it upside down, um, it's pretty distinctive. It's, it, well, something that Jeffrey painted one time, so I kind of remember it from that. Um, so, I don't know how you pronounce it. Do you, Dave? Scorius? Scorus? That's, that's what I would say. That's a nice yes. picture because it, it's a nice fresh one and you can see the slimy cap. Yeah. And this is this is why it's put into subspecies phlegmasium. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, it, when they dry out, it's just the cap is just shining and, 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 yeah. and it's not um, kind sticky. Of a dull anymore. Brown. Kind of a dull brown. Yeah, yeah, kind of a dull mottled brownish. I've got a picture of one I found when I was with you. In fact, I didn't know these species. You know, I, I learned it when I was up in the Adirondacks on, on that trail with you last right. summer. And this was in early October, so I'm not sure about the time range. I will say that I, when I try and take pictures now, I try and leave a couple of them, you know, growing right where they are, which those two on the uh, right upper are actually still in the ground. So anyway, it's an interesting mushroom that you might run into in New Jersey. I'm not sure where. Oh, all right. Okay. So <laughs> uh, this is what I still call Quartinarius semi-sanguineus. And for my purposes, you can call it whatever you want, but this is why I like it. I don't know if you can see how red orange that is. I just did this the last couple of days. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful color. Oh, 
And this is just two ounces of dried mushrooms, which is quite a few. And then also it's just the caps. The red is concentrated in the caps. I'm quite interested to see if, if, if you know, if I could track down that Corton area study. This is a genus and particularly in the, for the dyers that there's not been much concrete information on this at all. And I've seen even what I would call two different species up here. But these are my little familiar friends in the fall that I collect like crazy because they do make fabulous dye. And if, if any of you are, you know, oh, tinctorium, okay, I'll have to put that in. Um, if you're in the um, group Zooms that are upcoming uh, on the 18th, I'm doing the one on the uh, mushrooms unique natural dyers. So if you're interested in, this will be included, not this picture, but anyway, on mushroom dyeing generally. Okay, now this is a total unknown to me. It has to be a Cortinarius. It's been several years ago. This is not even, this picture is not even showing as yellow as the thing was. It was incredibly yellow. And this was also early October on a, a mixed mostly conifer. There were some larches there. Um, um, along a, a well, Bloomingdale bog is where it was, but I'd never seen any Corton areas that yellow all over and, and even yellower than this shows. And you see, it's got kind of an abrupt base there, kind of comes down and then goes out suddenly before it goes down into the base. So I have no idea what this is. Check um, subgenus phlegmatium. Again, this looks like a phlegmatium. I, I'm guessing the cap is either slippery or slimy. If it's dried out, it's slippery. If it's if it's still wet, it's slimy. I don't remember to tell you the truth, but I probably yeah. the collection maybe with some notes. I I just went through the that Quebec thing today because I was going through things the Cortinarius and looking at a lot of stuff, and there are some yellow um, phlegmatium. The, the other yellow thing is is leprosivy, but these don't look like leprosivy because those usually have more colorful gills. And the, and they're, the, uh, the, uh, the stature is different on leprosivy. Awesome. So that Quebec thing is a Michael Quebec uh, group who did that paper. Yeah, yeah. It's, okay. it's I'll really track good. it down from a Canadian friend. I, I don't know how to capture that thing that Igor put up. So I, I, you know, I showed this uh, in the summer, Dave, you and you and I were on this trail together when we saw these. Um, it, on the, now see, I have to even stop and think. The several on the left at like nine o'clock, just below, and probably the one just below that at six o'clock, those are Cortinarius, one of these lavender, who knows what kind of things. But the other- Oh, you've got a, some bluets in there too. <laughs> and the three on the right are bluets. Yeah, yeah. So folks, this is an important detail to keep in mind that sometimes they are very, very much um, similar looking. And in our case on this Rock Pond Trail and Blue Mountain Lake, they were all in the same area just before we got to the bridge. Do you remember that, Dave? There were bunches of all of them. Yes, anyway. there were really, really big purple quaternarius in the, um, I guess it was far mainly. and Yeah, it was a lot of uh, Yeah, maybe, maybe some spruce and hemlock, hemlock in there. Maybe. There were some yeah. great big ones. Yep. And I think most of these dry purple ones are now put into, I don't, the Quebec site is calling it, um, Anomaloid doides or something, but I'm just calling it um, anomala, anomalon or I, I have it written down. You'll, you'll see it later. But well, a lot of these big dry purple ones used to be sir, sir, oh, how do you say it? Sir, sericiocybe, sericiocybe. And that seems to be gone. That subgenus sericiocybe seems to be gone. And all of, all of those big dry ones have been put into this anomalous or 
um, Telemonia, would, and Telemonia is just ridiculous. There's so many, so many different looking things. The other thing for those of you who are not familiar with Courtney areas, um, the two on the left, upside down and right side up, show the Cortina quite well. You you can see the cobwebby veil between the stem and the cap. Anyway, they, they also, they also smell differently. Yeah, they do. This might have been, we, we ran into some on this trail that smelled of pears, very ripe pears. Uh, and I always think I know which one that is, but they're too close to tell. The next picture shows the undersides of, I think all of these. Oh yeah, yeah. So the three on the lower part of the picture are all bluets, the Lapista nuda whereas the upper ones are the Cortinarius. Cortina on the right there. And then you can see the sort of cinnamony gills. And that little Cortina turns into that rusty brown on the stem and sometimes will disappear entirely so you won't see it. But it's yeah, really- sometimes, sometimes it's hard to see the Cortina and, and the gills are not necessarily brown. When, when the spores start right. to ripen, the gills get brown. Right. But a lot and of these, um, anomalous types, um, the gills start out looking just like the bluets. They start out looking par or purple like that. And I was just gonna say the gills are on this particular one that's showing some brownish are a lot closer together than a lot of the areas, which tend to be widely spaced and very deep from top to bottom. Um, but this one's looking a lot more similar. So anyway, I just thought it's really good to see them together. All right, this is um, what I'm calling Cortinarius violaceus. Um, this is a fairly common mushroom up here around me. Uh, I thought that was a good picture, but maybe it isn't. It's almost black, it's so purple. When they come up, there's, there's quite a few of them in this one spot that I like to visit. But I'm sure this has got another name too. Nope, it's still called violaceus. And even and in this country. The interesting thing about Cortinarius violaceus, it is, I believe, the type specimen for yeah, the genus thought. Cortinarius, but not, none of the other Cortinarius mushrooms are closely related to it. It's in its own subspecies. It's a sub Sounds subspecies Cortinarius, and it's the only species, at least according to the Quebec study. But if it's the type, that means it's probably described from Sweden by Freeze or Linnaeus. Probably is, but but apparently um, but it could have, yeah, it's it could an intercontinental species because they're still calling it um, violaceous in, in North America. Anyway, it's a beautiful mushroom when you do see it. Cool, well, thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, Marisol. Hi. Hi. Okay. I know nothing about Cortinarius, but I wanted to show you, uh, I got only two types of Cortinarius, two observations about one and three observations about the other one. So this one was a little old, and I think it is Cortinarius caperatus. Although it was a little old, I still got spores on it and the spores match. And plus the appearance on the, on the stipe. And those are the spores. They seem ornamented, I'm not 100% sure. Most Cortinarius spores are ornamented. Oh. Some, some are very finely ornamented. And at the other extreme, you, you will sometimes see warts. Um, but usually the ornamentation is fairly fine. Um, and I forget where Caperatus falls. Mm -hmm.
this one was in better shape. And I think it's caperatus because of the characteristic uh, mark or whatever real or edge that it's left after it expands. Mm -hmm. The ring. Yeah. Yeah, the membranous ring as opposed to yeah. um, okay. just some like, like spiderweb type stuff collapsed onto the stock, which would be okay. a cartina. That's some, the, look at the gill edges. They're kind of uh, roughened. Yeah. Not quite serrated, but that's characteristic of them too. Oh, okay. All right. And what is the term for the, I don't, the decoration between the veil and the, the gills? How is a good observation? There is some kind of like zigzag there. Mm -hmm. I noticed on the other one, doing the one that is old, but what do I know? No clue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the upper stipe yeah. there. Right there. Mm -hmm. Is there a term for that kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, maybe, there, is maybe. A, there, oh, there is a term for it, but I, I remember hearing Brandon Matheny talk about Texture, textures on inosopes, and he had all kinds of terms I never heard of. Right, right. Well, there's maybe on this one, maybe floco scales, collapsed floco scales. I don't know. Wouldn't you call it the apex of the stipe? What yeah, 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 it's the apex. the apex. That's where the ornamentation is. Oh, okay. Yes, that is the apex, but that doesn't describe the texture, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chevron y look. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of chevron like. A pressed floco scales, maybe. <laughs> Inventing more words. Yeah. <laughs> words, like words, words. I like Chevroni better than that. It is usually called snakeskin pattern. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, sense. right. Okay, so listen, I know, I don't know about Gortinarius, but this is the second observation I have about this little guy. They were very tiny and there were troops of them on their really hidden in a swampy area in Brenda's burn park. And the other observation is from a spot a little further from this one. This one was from last year. They were so deep purple, almost like magenta. All of it, the cap, the gills, and the stem, and very small size. And I'll bet you didn't keep them either, right? I gave it to, to Liz. Good. Good. Uh, but next time I'm going to save um, one for DNA. I have no idea if it is what I am saying. And I found this one one time at the edge of um, uh, in Franklin Parker. Maybe um, I says woodland, but I don't remember exactly in what area. But I remember one time I found it next to the edge of the the creek. The, yeah, they're always there. Uh, the wood, wood, what's the name of the creek? Yeah, the waiting, waiting creek. Waiting. Yes. Yeah, they're always they, there every year. They are, when yeah. we go where the mitrulas grow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right on the, yeah, on the edge. Always. Yeah, always. Oh, yeah, I found them there. Okay. They're, I, they are small. I don't know if they, yeah. that's their stature. Yeah? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Which just means you have to pick a lot of them before you get. Um, enough to use for any amount of wool. All right. And this last one was found by somebody in Wells Mills. No way, that seems like me. Can we look? It looks we are Ocean Township. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah. In, like, I mean, where should this be? Route 72. Hmm, it's probably Wells Mill. I bet you. Oh, it could yeah. be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Somebody awesome. found it. Yeah, okay. Somebody found this. What I don't understand is how I have the photo on the ground. No idea. And I thought it was too robust. So that's why I wasn't sure about the other ones being sanguineos because this one was too robust. 
in comparison to the ones that I found that they probably just the that, young you know, one. But look at the size in comparison to the other ones. It's probably just the young one head. hasn't expanded. These these can vary according to the weather and how hard it is for them to put. Mm. Right. This looks a lot like something we found at uh, this past September. Kind mm. of a fatter stem, a little lighter on the on the stem in color, a little brownish red on top. Uh, we called it Cortinarius harrisonii, but you know who knows. Uh, okay. Uh, Harrisonii, Harrisonii has a yellow uh, base of the stock. This one looks like it has a red cortina. Also, look at the one in the background. I don't see any yellow there on the cortina, but that might be hard to see. Looks a little, looks kind of red to me. Look how fibrous the cap is on the left as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yellowish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the person, that's what I am thinking. The person brought the whole patch, the whole with the moss and the leaves and the needles. That's why I didn't find this. I think he found some people brought the like little terrariums to the table. <laughs> the cortina on the one on the right is very interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whether we are bills in the one that looks more robust. Yeah, I can't tell if they're squished together or if they're yeah, you know what like happened deep, there. deeply forking. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. They're twisted. That that looks like short gills to me. No, they're compressed. They just compressed. Oh, they didn't have the space to grow in the right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No forked. Yeah. Nope. No forking. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Marcel. Okay. Did we do DNA of this one, Igor? I mean, um, I mean, not, other not times? To uh, it could be in Jam Bank. It could be in that uh, French study. You have to look okay, it up. Okay, next time I'll save it and we can make one to see. Yep. Okay, because I don't know. Yeah, Sanguinius is on Champignon du Quebec, so I'm assuming that they they must have sequenced something and, and it matched that species, which, uh, which is a European species, I believe. Okay, so this is one that I have from a few years ago that was called Quartinarius torvus. I think Walt Sturgeon is the one who put a name on that. So supposedly these things stink. But I don't, I don't, I can't remember if this had a smell to it or not. It was a number of years ago, but I think um, this whitish bloom is one of the things, one of the distinct distinguishing features on it. The we, what? What? The, the white, the white stipe, oh, the kind okay. of bloomy looking oh, okay, okay. stuff mm -hmm. on here. And th these are found under hardwoods, under beach, you know. That's where that's at. I was reading this. Um, Two of them, Torvis is a European name. And Michael Quo says there's at least two of them in the United States that kind of go under that name. He was saying the one from down south tends to be a little stinkier than this one. But these are pretty big. These are three or four inches tall. Luke, was this one of the was this one of the ones that also has more of a membranous veil? You know, there's no I these were too mature to have a veil, so I just don't know. When, when Torvis is younger and the cap just opens up, it leaves a ring that's a membrane. And, and the ring is the top of a sheathing coating on the lower stock. And I'm not seeing it on these. Oh, right the there. color seems a little odd, too, for Torvis. Look right there uh, where my cursor yeah. is. Is that not the sheathing? Oh, it might be down there. That might be. That might be. It just slipped down the stock. Doesn't look like sheathing to me. Yeah, it looks, that, that looks like debris, gross. really, actually. Here's a link from Michael Close, and he has pictures of Taurus. If anyone is interested. All right, well, Slightly decorated uh -huh. spores.
So I think maybe Wump thought these were Torvis because of the widely spaced gills, because Torvis has widely spaced gills. Mm -hmm. um, but there's um, there's a, a species, well, there's um, distance, but this isn't distance. But then there's a few other species that are like related to distance. And the, I think they used to call them section hinuli or something like that. Um, but I would wonder if Torvis is, I mean, Torvis, when I identify it as gray or like purplish gray. Okay. Um, but, I, you know, maybe I'm just. Yeah, honestly, I mean, between Walt and John Plisky calling it that, I didn't really honestly look much further into it. Oh, huh. interesting. So I, yeah, do have, looking... I do have one of distance, I think. Yeah, this is one I call distance. Found in a, a, a pretty close, pretty similar area. Hardwood, southeastern Pennsylvania. You know, now the funny thing about this one is, yeah, it's got the widely spaced orangish gills like distance has, but it doesn't have any ornamentation on the cap, which could That's... get washed off, I guess, but... And, and the color have, is off too. Yeah, the color is a little bit orangey, <laughs> I guess. Um, I, this looks like the same thing as, as the one you just showed. Really. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking the Younger same thing. thing. I even, think they're the same. Even the spores are kind of the same. And and you know what? These ones in section hinuli, they have um, the spores with the small Q, meaning you know that they're um, almost subglobose. Bridally ellipsoid, almost subglobose. Um, fairly well ornamented too. Those mm -hmm. those guys, most of them are. I, I think this is the same species as the other one you just showed. Yeah, now that I'm looking it's at it. It's a little younger. And I, I don't think it's Torvis. I think it's something else. That's but you know, I mean, you know, Walt and John are both good identifiers, so I, you know, I might be wrong here. Certainly. In fact, I was gonna preface what I was when I start talking about the ones that I sent you, that a lot of my IDs are probably wrong because these things are really hard to get right. right. And, and just getting close, you know, sometimes if you can just get close. Right. Okay. And then I had this photograph of Caparatus, Caparatus that I had mentioned that has a fair amount of. Oh, cool. Do you eat them, Luke? Yes. They're good. Yeah, I do. I like them a lot. So the question was about the Cortina when it's still attached, right? Mm -hmm. Looks like a membrane to me. Look at the one second from right. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. At least less cobwebby as most. It's this. They used to put this species in its own genus, Rosides. It was Rosides. Rosides yeah. yeah. And, and now it's subgenus Rosides or section Rosides. Yeah. Um, the, these have a true ring. They don't have a cortina. Yeah, it's not a cortina. It's a membrane. It's yeah. a membrane. Look at that one second ring. from the right. Just like the in the money. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good photo. Really yeah, good. Very photo. cool. Thank you. Yeah, nice, very instructive photo. You can see a lot of traits. Luke, do you eat the, the whole thing, stipe and cap? Um, yeah, yeah, I eat the whole thing. Although I think the cap's better. The cap's a little sure. softer, but I eat the whole thing. I'm not throwing away. Nice. Okay, this is from Nina and John Burkhart via Taxonomy Tuesday. Okay, this is... Uh... This is, of course, um, another bunch of those things from the Wading Creek right on the edge there where uh, um, Marcel found hers. And they're very small. And um, uh, Liz, Liz, this was one of Liz's, she'd always go down there and get them, sneak down there and get a whole pile of them and dry them off. And now, now, now Ursula's got them, so. With what you'll use them in that workshop, huh? Yeah, exactly. Now, now this was was identified by um, this was in 2011 at Franklin Park in April, and this was identified by 
um, Dr. Armadi in, um, in Oregon as uh, Croceus. So I don't know why. I think he did the DNA on it. I don't know. I don't think we have Croceus here in the East. Well, he, he that's what he called it. And he's, you know, he's a, he's kind of the, the, the authority on it. I had yeah, said that, it that, to that him. That was a long time ago. So I know. None, none of this stands anymore. It's, com it's been completely rewritten. So okay. we're learning a ton of new stuff about courts. Okay. It's much more complicated than we thought it was. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I had sent him the actual mushrooms. So yeah. Okay. I wonder if it's the same thing that Brandon showed before and if it's the same thing that Liz collected, you know, that we sequenced. Mm -hmm. I was wondering uh, that too. It does look awfully similar. Maybe, but this was gotten in April. Sure, why not? I mean, uh, you know, I find bolides in the Pine Barrens in April too, or, or May, I should say. The conditions just mimic, you know, the fall and they just grow. Okay. Yeah, right. I, yeah, I I found uh, Croceus type um um Cortinarius in early May one year uh, near my house under some spruce trees. I've seen that up here a couple of times too. Well anyway, whatever it is, uh, we do need to sequence it. Let's just uh we'll call it Cortinarius incognitus and call it a day. Incognitus sensomathaney. I don't think he has a role. <laughs> yeah, that's an actual species name. <laughs> oh, it is an actual species. I thought yeah. it, um, my bad. <laughs> yeah, and it's a little brown thing. <laughs> okay, now I, I have this. Uh, the This was mentioned, too. Uh, this was from Wells Mill. I have, this shows the cortina, and then the next picture shows the, the mushroom itself, gooey. There you go. Very slimy. Uh, the cap oh, is very slimy. The, the stem is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, there's that lavender stem and the, the yellow cap. What's the name? Uh, col col Colonitis. Colonitis. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nina, I think this, this was sequenced, and colonitis yeah, right. is the closest thing that came up. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I put it on because it's already sequenced. <laughs> right. And then I have the next one. I also have that sequence too. That co Louisii. This is from um uh wait, what's this? Estelle Manor. Yeah, this one's in subgenus leprosidae. Well, I don't know. I I I mean I yeah. So, so I mean, I've, I've got one that looks just like this, and that's what I called it, Louisi. Oh. It was something else before, and I just yeah. reviewed it today and couldn't was, find the name, and yes, then I Albo, realized it was changed, and it's now it's Louisi. I think it was Albo Croceus or something. Albo like Croceus, something like that. Yeah, Albo Ludia, Albo Croceus, Albo something like rather than yeah. with yellow on the end. Yeah. yeah. And then this is that that gooey thing again, the mucosis. I think we we should we should sequence this to to make sure that's what it is. I would not be surprised if all these things wind up to be a huge species complex. Well, it would make it easy if they're all the same thing. Isn't it? <laughs> well, you see. There's such a thing called adaptive radiation. And when that happens, you know, ITS sequences don't change. You can have a new species, but ITS doesn't have enough time to change. So you don't have different things having the same ITS sequence and you cannot separate them. It's a very common thing in quartzine areas and agaricus too, I think. Okay. So you can only go that far. <laughs> with, with DNA. But, they, to, but, well, but they really are different species. So are they like no longer... Uh like compatible from a reproductive standpoint? No, I mean, if, if speciation occurs, yeah, that, that's the definition. They cannot mate, but the ITS is going to be the same. Hmm. So I guess they're relying on other other genomes to separate them out? Yeah, you can. You have to do other, other loci or genes. ITS is not a gene, it's junk DNA actually. But uh, yeah, um, ITS has its limitations. Okay, that's it. 
All right. You're close as it is. You know, that's all you can say. <laughs> I mean, even if like five or 10 of them, I mean, you're not going to sequence every collection to find out where it is, right? That would be stupid. I, th I think there's another name. That's what I would call that thing mucosis. There's another name that starts with S, uh, stalactitis or something like that. Um, I have it. It's it's on my list. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I explained a little bit about how I made these subgenus names. And in some cases, I just reverted back to spellings that I thought seemed more reasonable because I, I'm not sure if the Quebec site is trying to make these words sound like they're French or something, but some of them were seemed seemed a little strange to me. So, so some of them I put in quotes, these subgenus names, and those are the ones I I changed a little bit. But so so um, that link you have there, David, that's a link to the file on your computer. Nobody else would be able to access that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I because my name is there. I, I thought probably nobody can. Yeah, so sorry about that. That's not very useful. But um, you can, I'm that's, sure you'd be able to find this somewhere. That's the, uh, uh, Igor put the. Uh, yes, it's already in the chat. That. I already put it in the chat like half an hour ago, maybe even more than that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. So you'll get this whole thing. It's basically a book, like Igor said. And. And these new groupings, which I'm calling subgenera, I'm not even sure really what they're calling them. It's, everything sounds like section, and but it just seems kind of weird to have sections with sections. So I, I just started using the word subgenus. It just seems more practical for these major distinctions. And there are a lot of sections. Um, now subgenus Cortinarius, the only thing there is, is Cortinarius phylaceus. Okay, so let's do this. The only thing there. Let's do this because and we already saw it, that one. Except, so, David, I heard that in the USA, and this is from Emma Herrer, who is a specialist. Uh -huh. in right. We have yep. more than one. We have more than one species in here. So. Oh, there's more than one violaceus. Oh, yep. okay. Do yep. So, so these are um, these are some of the words I've been using. Phlegmasium, telemonia, telemonia has all kinds of stuff in it. Anomalous. Um, telemonia has a lot of the things that used to be in Seracioscybe, I think that's how you say it, are now in telemonia. And a lot of the things that used to be in subgenus Seracioscybe are now in anomalous, what they're calling, at least it sounds like anomalous. I called it anomalous. Um, but you know what? In Telemonia, I think toward the bottom of Telemonia, you'll see Torvis. So, yeah, see what my Torvis looks like here. I've got okay. two of them. Okay, and then yeah. I was going to say, let's, um, because there's a lot of them here, let's try to manage this by maybe looking at an example or two from each subgenus. Okay. That might be a way to look at it. Well, from, from Dermocybe, Dermocybe, you already saw, you know, the mushroom formerly known as semi sanguineous. You might want to look at. Oh, there's Torvis. Okay, yes, right. we'll come back. So, see, Torvis to me is like this purplish, and sometimes it's kind of grayish. And see the ring? And that ring is part of, uh, it's like partially sheathing. It goes down the stock. See the one on the lower left? Yeah. See the way it goes down the stock a little bit? But otherwise, the gills are very widely spaced. Um, but I don't know. Maybe maybe Torvis is yellow sometimes. Um but there are um, some other things that have widely spaced gills um, in the so-called section hin hinuli, the ones that are related to distans. And some of the lep leprosybes have uh, widely spaced gills also. Can um, I ask a question on that tortoise? Yeah, sure. Uh, was that the, the base? Was that bulbous? Yeah, there's a little there's a little bulb on the base of that one usually. I think. I mean, we can look at it again. <laughs> um, it's hard to re remember all of these, uh, but I think Torvis usually has a little bit of a. Um, you know what? Let me see. is Torvis in? I have Tim Baroni's book here. It's, I don't think he has Tor. Does he have Torvis in here? Oh wow! Yeah. So so that one I would call Torvis also. That one's not doesn't really have a bulb, but it's. 
but it's uh, it's enlarged at the bottom. The color is a little bit different, but you can see there the way that ring is part of material that it sort of thins out, but it sheathes the upper part of the stock a little bit. So that's oh. what I would call torches. Mm -hmm. Baroni doesn't have it. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, so I'll stop looking. Yeah, so this one's not quite as purple, but I maybe it just comes in, in a lot of different shades. Look, look at squam, squamosulus. That's an interesting one because it looks it looks like it should be related to violaceus. And I think back in the day they thought it was, uh, but now it's it's not placed on the phylogenetic tree near um, violaceus. Uh, but it basically looks a lot like violaceus. It's got like the textured cap, the the really um, enlarged stock. See how the cap is like scaly, like broken up into scales, but it's not purple or it's not dark, dark purple. It's a different color. This one was from Stokes, by the way. This was from last fall um, at Stokes. It's a pretty, that's a pretty distinctive uh, species. So it looks a little bit like Violaceus, but it's not dark. Yeah. So let's go back up to Violaceus because that was a type specimen. We saw one observation. Yeah, of mine is not quite as as uh, purple. It's not quite as dark, but it but it is. But like Igor just said, oh. there might be more than one. Yeah. Um, Emma Harrower says there's more than one of these. So, um, so Linnaeus. So this uh, was described in New York. Yeah, yeah. A lot of these are your. Some of these European names apparently apply in North America. See how the cap is like grainy. It's like broken up into grains. The scales are kind of grainy, and the stock is. It's. I guess you would call it bulbous, but it's not abruptly bulbous. It's just really, really wide, on the lower part. It's like grainy, hairy. Yeah. Really, a lot of ornamentation on the on the cap. Yeah, like a like a matted. Yeah. Like a matted. Hair. Yeah, it's very. It's really textured. You can you can feel it. Really, it's feels kind of grainy. I wouldn't be surprised if our North American uh, species uh, violaceus is different from European one. Well, they're still using that name, and and I imagine that they've compared sequences. No, so no, no. I have to find out. I'm, yeah, I'm. Not, I don't know what's up there. I didn't investigate that stuff. Well, I don't have a sequence for this anyway. But but I, what, okay. But they do have. Uh, I'm sure that there are uh, North American collections that have been sequenced. Possibly, uh, it would be easy to find out. Yeah, you would think that they would. You know, it's sort of an iconic species. You know, it's the type species for genus Cortinarius, I believe. Yeah, Pretty sure that Michael Qua Michael Quebec talks about this. You know, I can open up the file and take a look. All right. Okay, so we've seen a lot of examples of. Uh, so Crocioconius. Oh, and uh, there's the other Malith Malachorius, or Cinnamonius. Okay, so we're moving so, into this back in, into a, another section. Yeah, we now. can skip Tinctorium because we already saw those. So this is, what I'm saying is either Cinnamomius or Malachorius. It's very much orange. Not Malachorius. No? No. That has, uh, when you cut it in half, it's got green, greenish stem. Uh, and they, the gills are wrong for Malachorius. Okay, let's, so then I would probably call it Cinnamomius. Yeah, yeah. That I would, think I, I had that as a higher probability, uh, more confidence. I'm not sure. I think I have both names proposed, but one of them is a little bit, a little bit higher confidence. So I'm not sure how good this picture is. I don't get good pictures through this binocular scope. Looks like the spores are pretty small. Mm -hmm. So very bright orange on the gills. So what did I put for the proposals? So yeah, Cinnamomius I have as, as a, 
a more confident proposal than Malacorius. So, okay, so it's probably not Malacorius. Interesting that Malacorius is a free species. So Linnaeus being first and then freeze, both having studied in south, Southern Sweden. So I put there under Malacorius that because the spores are small. So I don't know, maybe the spores for Cinnamomius are supposed to be larger. So it might not be either one of those things. Yeah, it might be something else. Okay, do you want to see any more in thermosophy? Show, show um, Crocioconius, that's a pretty cool species. It's, it's, it's sort of like Crocius, but it's smaller and it has bigger spores. And it's got an umbo and it's, the cap has got a little, little bit, it's a little darker usually. The, so see how, the, see how it's got like a prominent umbo and the cap is a little darker, especially toward the disc. And the spores are larger. The spores are up to a, sometimes a little over 10 microns. Uh, Crocius has spores that only that typically under nine microns. So that's not a particularly great picture right there. You can't really tell much color. It's a little overexposed. Um, uh, I probably could have picked out a better observation here. I find these a lot. There's um, a place near my my house, it's only like two miles from my house. There's this stand of Scott's pine and they, they grow there every year. So the spores, these spores are gonna be probably at least close to 10 microns. And so you have to you know, make a little um, conversion factor. So in other words, if, if you think, if, if you look at what looks like five microns, because there's five divisions, that those five, that's actually more than 10 microns. That's like that's like twelve microns uh, if you go through all five of those little um, hash marks. Um, so these spores are larger than Crocius. Now, do I actually find Crocius? I don't know. You know, I mean, I think I do, but I, when I post on Mushroom Observer Crocius, I usually call it Crocius Group because I think there's, it's probably not all that well understood in North America, but I think this Crocioconius thing is a North American species. It's, it, at the first place I ever saw it was on Chambignon du Quebec, and it fits very well, um, what, what I've been finding. And it's a conifer species. And there's also um, Harrisonii, so we can see here, the, um, the yellow base of the stock, because I'm pretty sure that's, that, that shows up pretty well in this observation. Yep, see how the bottoms of the stocks are, they get yellow? Yeah, that's a lot like what we saw in Connecticut at Coma. I mm -hmm. did that picture. Uh, this one, Dave? Yep. Dave, which one is this one? I think it's Harrisonii. Oh, 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 okay, thanks. Now, it, it could be something else. It could be like Marilandensis, but uh, I think Emma Harrower actually helped me out with this once. In fact, she may have actually helped with this observation because she, she suggested um, names to me a few times, but that's really yellow. Look how yellow that is on the base of the stock mm -hmm. on those two that are fused. In the upper left one, can you tell if the mycelium is yellow? Upper left. Well, that one, the one that we're getting, we're, yeah, that's yellow. Right? That's pretty much yellow down there. It looks yellow to me. Yeah, it's yellow. Yeah. Now the one in the lower left is broken, so so you just don't see it. So, I, so that's what I'm calling this Harrisonii, and it makes sense to me. What habitat? I think I found these, this doodle hollow place is mixed woods, okay. hemlock, um, oh, ash, birch, beech. There's all sorts of trees there. There's probably some, there's oak there. There's every, a lot of different kinds of trees there. Okay. It's uh, you go down into this pretty deep hollow and there's a creek down there and it's, a, it's an old forest. Um, gee, let me see if I, for some reason, I'm thinking this is a hemlock species, but that's probably wrong. Let me see if it's. <laughs> I think it was hemlock where we found it in coma. 
Oh, yeah. okay. So yeah, it might be. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of there's a lot of hemlock in Doodle Hollow. I know that. Okay. The Sanguinius is just gonna look like what we already saw because it's right. from the pine barns. So mm -hmm. the next is these leprosibes. These are pretty cool. We already saw Lewisii, and um, I think Nina showed it. And if you if you just click on that very quickly, you'll see it really looks like what what Nina showed. So this was for these are from Pennsylvania. These are from Nescapec Park, and that really looks an awful lot like what she showed. So I think we're we're probably both right on that one. So this is a leprosybe. Leprosybes, I was able to Google translate some of the stuff from the Quebec uh, thing. And there's some sort of chemical in leprosybes that gives them this yellow, uh, bright yellow, sometimes greenish tint. They're pretty cool looking mushrooms, these leprosybes. They're all Why is pretty this called cool. lepro? What makes it lepro? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Oh, and a lot of the leprosibes have subglobospores too, and small, small subglobospores. At least when I was reviewing these things today, that seemed to be the case. I looked at a few pictures of spores of leprosibes, and they were subglobos, meaning, you know, not round, but not that far off from being round. Do we have another? Okay, sometimes it takes a minute. Yeah, it's, see, it's, and Flavi, you know, it's yellow. It's got the yellow right in the name. That's another leprosybe. So this one, Emma Harrower actually identified for me. I didn't, I didn't know what this was. <laughs> she she got it for me. I think I may have said, I think I just said Cortinarius, I guess. Once again, you got these small subglobospores. So these are a little bigger, but you can see there's quite a bit of yellow on them and the, the veil is yellow. See the deposit. Some of that might be from spores too, I guess. But the veil itself looks kind of yellow. And then there's a leprosybe here um, that's coming up. We can look at that that I found um, in New in New Jersey in two places, uh, Limonius and Wells Mills, I think. And what's that? What was that other place, Nina? What's that place where you were leading a, a mushroom walk there? Um, Cloverdale. Where Cloverdale. Becky was, Becca was. Yeah. yeah, it was called Cloverdale. Cloverdale, yeah, we found found it there too. Once again, you know, like a colorful, brightly colored mushroom. You know, in this case, more orange, I guess, than yellow, but still a lot of a lot of color. That's another leprosybe. I don't know if I got spores out of these. Oh, that's KOH. KOH is, um, a lot of times you get good information from KOH on the cap of a Cortinarius. That looks pretty much like blood red on the cap. No spores. No spores. Yeah, that's. I found those in New Jersey, so I. I guess I. I didn't take them home, or we didn't get around to looking at them. The other Lemonius is also that. The other one is from New Jersey, also. These were a little more mature, I think. So those were kind of those last ones were kind of buttons. I may have got spores out of these. Where were th these? Were the ones from Cloverdale? I'm pretty sure these are the same species. They're just a little older and darker. Are 
pretty conical. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I believe that is um, a trait commonly associated with this species. I'm not certain of that. Let me see if I only have the one book here. A lot of these quartz you don't find in any field guides. It's just too many quartz. Oh, Limonius is in Baroni. Okay, 314. Let's see what he says. Um, Cortinarius Limonius is moderately large, orange or orange brown overall, with golden yellow or yellow veil material on the stem. There you go. All right. Do not eat this or any other orange brown Cortinarius species. <laughs> So I, I'm pretty sure that's what we what I got here. But the conical shape might it might not be um, something that's generally present in, in the species. I don't know. I don't find these. You know, I don't find many of these leprosides really. When I do find them, I try to photograph them because they're pretty cool. There's another leprosidae there. I don't I don't know what it is. I think it's a leprosidae. Let's see if it sort of fits the general idea. This one, did I skip over it? Yeah, I'm not sure if this, oh, that, this one I'm not sure of. It's either Dermosibi or Leprosibi. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I would, I, this looks more like a Leprosibi to me, like the thick, thicker stock, bright yellow orange i don't know i don't know i don't know what that you know if i got spores from this i probably would have had a better idea i guess i didn't get any spores from it uh because most of the dermosibes they don't have like subglobo spores this is the one you were talking about at least the dermosibes i look at the spores are elliptical and the and the Q is usually over 1.5. Um, so what did I, where did I have this one? You had a, you had a question mark on this one, whether it was the prosopy. Leprosopy, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't even know if it's either of those two things, to be honest, it might be maybe anomalous, but I don't know. The yellow gills sort of point toward, more towards leprosopy or dermosopy. Kind of big for a demosity though. Kind of kind of robust. So Okay. Well, again, so are these mixacium? Mixacium, yeah. The colonitis you'll see there, you'll see once again in colonitis, you'll see the um, purple stock like we saw in Nina's. It's a very slimy purple stock. And I'm not sure if the slime is purple or the stock is purple. It's kind of hard to tell. So this one is a, I guess the lighting is not great, but you can still see the stock is kind of purple. So mucosis has a white stock. I mean, that's one way that I would, that I believe you can tell the difference. Yeah, you can see it better there. And the top part of the stock is brown. It's probably from the spores. So the, another interesting one is this stilatadius still or whatever. I think I've got some of those here. These myxacium, by the way, the entire mushroom is coated in slime, but the slime can dry out and then they're just shiny and, 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 and um, kind of, I don't know how you would describe it, maybe slippery. So there's from the pine barrens, this thing where, you know, we've been calling mucosis. And there were a lot of these when I was at the pine barrens this past fall. There were a lot of them, they get big. And the stalks kind of dry out a little bit, um, but they, when they're fresh, they're, they're slime all over them, the caps and the stalks. And as you said, white stalk. Yeah, white stalk as opposed to the, the purple, or, or lilac tinge. 
Yeah, and it's kind of this caramel color too. Is I think pretty distinctive. So what about this uh, Stilettitius? That's a pretty cool. That one's a little darker. Now I think I'm right. If you'll notice, a lot of my proposals here on Mushroom Observer are not at complete confidence. Uh, so there were some other people weighed in here. This one actually, um, Ron Pes Pesterino suggested the um, the identification. So I had pseudo sailor, but that's wrong. Pseudo sailor is an old name for colonitis, and it should have a purple stock, and it doesn't. But look at that slime. <laughs> So these are pretty fresh and you can really see they are really covered in slime. <coughs> That's the same mucosus? Yeah, I think this is me. Um, still a, still a tatus. Oh, oh, oh. Still a oh, it belongs to that group, okay. Yeah, it's it's in, Mike says, it, spores are really, I think this big spores were probably something that were very helpful here. These spores are really big. These look like they're probably up to about 14 microns. This, these spores look a little bit like Hebaloma spores. They're, they're kind of almond shaped. Yeah, I say they're kind of pointy. Yeah, yeah, tapered on the one end. Um, did I say there how big the spores were? Because it looks like they're probably up to around 14 microns. Uh oh, it says my internet connection is un. Uh, okay, the little thing just went away. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see any spores. Nah, it doesn't, doesn't say. Okay, well, those they're big. Those are big spores. Uh, I think some of the other Mycetium um, species have big spores as well, but those were pretty big. So this Another Trivialis, one. I think. Yeah, I was going to say. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, if, there, if you have a Trivialis, I'd like to see that next. Um, yeah, I think Emma Harrower may have helped me with that Trivialis. I'm not sure. Okay, this is still still tedious. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it. And I probably I got some spores and they were big. So it's a, it's a lot like mucosis, but I, I think it's spore size really that helps you separate. Is it a little is it is a little narrower than uh, mucosis? Yeah, maybe the stalk's a little longer too. I, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, taller and thinner. It seems like. Yeah, mucosis has got a pretty fleshy uh, cap. Yeah, mucosis gets really big. Okay, so there's the spores there. They're pretty big. These don't look like they're quite as big as the last ones, but it looks like they're maybe up to about 12 microns. Just, just guess, you know, guesstimating here. They're pretty big though. And they do have that, um, what do they call it? Like sub amygdaloid shape. It's kind of like an almond sort of, but it's humpbacked. Okay. Here's your oh, the Trivialis. Yeah, this was a young one, I believe. I, let me see. Did I get some help with this one? I think I may have. Yeah, Emma. Yeah, Emma. Emma uh, suggests thought. Uh, so I just put Quaternarius subgenus Myxaceum here because because I don't think I, I I don't see how you can be certain really. But Trivialis has this kind of like scaly stalk. So I looked it up and, you know, that does seem to be a trait of Trivialis. But it's another one of these that it's all covered in slime, especially when it's young. And then it dries out. But at first, it's got like the veil is basically slime. Hello? Now, on that one, the cap, the stock is not as scaly. Once again, you got these sub amygdalate spores. So they're kind of tapered and they're, they're pretty big. I don't have the um, reticle in this microscope, but those spores are pretty big.
So I think these were found under white pine and hemlock, if I remember. And then the funny thing is this subgenus Phlegmacium, does it say that? Con just says coniferous area. Yeah, Nescapex state, but yeah, that was um, white, white, pine, a lot of white, big white pine there and some hemlocks mixed in, and maybe a few oaks and birch. But um, so you would expect um, Phlegmacium, you know, which just sort of sounds like it's going to be slimy. But those guys are just slimy when the, on the cap when they're young. And then the slime dries out and they just get slippery. Um, one that Susan showed before, Scarus, is in um, Phlegmacium. And the ones she showed were young and they were, they were slimy. Corrugatus is in Phlegmacium, uh, which I didn't know until that might, been, that might be one that was moved. This one's easy to identify. It's Cortinarius corrugatus. It's got a honey, like an orange yellow cap. And usually the cap is radially corrugated. It means it has these fairly deep grooves, um, wrinkles in the cap. These are not all that deep on this one. I have another picture of a different one where the, the grooves are a lot deeper, but you can see them there. And the young gills are usually this strange purplish color like that one see it's like a slightly purple now they get they get rusty brown once the spores are fully mature uh, but when they're young they sort of look like that and they usually have a conical cap as well at least at first until they until they expand then they kind of flatten out a little bit but i find a lot of those usually by birch there's, there's a yeah, there's the other one that you can really see the radial uh, wrinkles. So it's, it's not, this one's pretty easy to learn. Um, yeah, we found this one in Stokes and other yeah. places too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you'll find that in Stokes, I'm sure. Yeah, we have found it in Manasquan a long time ago. And uh, I mean, it's, it's all over New Jersey, it's not just North. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah I'll I find, find it in the Poconos. I find it all wherever there's birch and I'll find maybe it hemlock also. Southeastern I'm Pennsylvania. Sure. Yeah. Oh, probably so it probably wrong. likes a lot of different kind of trees. I'll say we're more 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 oak and beech and that sort of stuff. Down yeah. There. Yeah. Probably likes a lot of a lot of different kind of trees. Yeah, I don't I don't see it with my conifers here, but further down in the Adirondacks, I would expect to see it. All right. So this is scars. Okay. Yeah, because this one, this is one I found in the Adirondacks when I was hiking with, with Susan. This is a dried out scars. So it's it's in section phlegmacium. Um so when it's young, it's it's slimy on the cap, but these were just kind of like smooth very very smooth and and slick but not slick not like oily slick just shiny kind of shiny and from dried out slime really and you can see also the same on susan's the gills have this strange kind of green tint so it's a fairly distinctive species though once you once you learn it i don't find it around here though yeah yeah, that yeah, I'm yeah, I remember these. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing that really jogs my memory when I see this is these sort of slightly greenish gills. And a little bulb at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks like the spores are pretty big for this guy too. Um Yeah, and it's got that brown sort of model, sort of brown cap, light brown, grayish. So, so I got question marks by this one. So I don't know what what do we have here? Do we even have phlegmacium? That's what I'm saying. 
Oh, this thing. Oh, yeah. So, so, um, so this guy out west in California, Dimitar, he, uh, he's really, really good with Cortinarius. So he had suggested to me a long time ago, Cortinarius Varia Color Group. And you know what? I, and that I used to find that name. I'm pretty sure it was on the Quebec site. I'm pretty sure it was on the California um, mushroom site, identification site. And now I can't find the name anymore. So apparently they, they've decided to call it something else. But, but I can't find any, any place that tells me what, what used to be Varia color. What is it now? And these are the same fruiting. These purple ones that we just saw and these brown ones are the same fruiting. I picked a few and I left the rest there. And it's a place not that far from my house. So I was able to visit over a two week period. And another one that's got fairly big spores. Those look like they're at least over 10. The biggest ones look like they're about 10 microns. That's the same, same fruiting, but that was like two weeks later. So I, I, I think probably phlegmacium is where those guys be like. Now these telemonia, these are just ridiculous. How much the different morphology that you see in, in, in telemonia. So quaternarius distans. Um, and then there's some other ones that look like distans. And distans, it's probably because of the distantly spaced gills. Usually it forms a ring or a ring zone. And generally, my understanding is that distance has the scaly cap, like the really, really small scales. So it's like sandpaper kind of. Um, but I find ones that look up almost the same, but they have smooth cap. So I'm not sure if it's the same species or just something related. And the spores for these guys are, are usually fairly well ornamented. Um, and they're they're kind of they're kind of wide. Um, so the Q statistic would be a small number with these, maybe like 1.3 or something. So in other words, if you take a ratio of the length to the width of a spore, you get the Q statistic. And, and a lot of times the Q statistic is, is a very uh, good piece of information to get like the average Q. So I think there's another, another couple of distance. Look at the second distance, because this one's really scaly. And a lot of times distance has a, pro, a pronounced umbo. And I think, I think I've got one here that shows that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's really over the top, though. That um, but no. you see, um, <laughs> you see how it looks kind of like sandpaper. Wow, that is my concept of distance is you know that it's going to have that. Um, but I don't know. Maybe those scales wash off. Maybe the cap expands, and as the cap as the cuticle spreads out, maybe the scales fall off. But once again, look at how distantly spaced those gills are. Also, see, there's a pretty well-defined ring zone from the Cortina. Yep, right there. Usually, I find these with oak. And it's a lot of times, these are one of the first gilled mushrooms found in, um, like, June, maybe even late May. OK, we have about five minutes left, so I'm going to. Uh, you know what? Show flexipes. I mean, this is the same. The same subgenus is as as those things as Susan showed before. Those armillatus, those great big beefy things with the thick stalks, and the the saffron colored rings on the stalks. These are in the same subgenus. These thin scaly things. With the, with the pointed cap, pointed umbo. This is Flexipes group. There's like several species Flexipes 
um, some variety, different varieties. Sometimes they, they say they smell like geraniums, but I've only found once or twice ones that had a, a very faint odor, flowery odor. Uh, but they are a group. There's, I think Quebec has like three, two or three varieties of them. And if you look at Hematritrichias, um, that's going to look almost the same. Um, it's a bigger mushroom with smaller spores. So, so I, I'm pretty sure I've got this not backwards. Yeah, Hematritrichias has the small spores and Flexipes has the bigger spores. So this looks almost like a robust Flexipes. It's got the scaly cap, the pointed umbo. Um, and Flexipes will form a ring like that sometimes as well. Uh, maybe these guys are a little shorter. I'm not sure that, that that's always the case, but these have smaller spores. So that's one way I would tell the difference. And we already Hi. saw Torvis. So these anomalous, oh, Bolaris. Bolaris is a good one to see. That one's one you can learn if you find it. Um, I don't find it every year, but when I do find it, I know what it is. Um, it's got this cap that breaks up into scales. So the, the actual cuticle sort of just breaks apart into scales. And, and that is typically the color that it is when they get, when they expand more of those, you know, the, the scales uh, have more space in between them. And the stock also is, is kind of, it looks like it's scaly, but it's just patchy sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe that's just remnants of the Cortina. But Bolaris is one you can learn to recognize if, 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 you, if you go to a place where it grows. Whoa, that's beautiful. Yeah, oh. that, yeah, those are cool looking. Yeah, they're, they're really nice looking. We found so. it in way, way under. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't find it very often. Hick I usually find it in Hickory Run. So let's see, was this Hickory Run? I bet you it probably was because that's usually where I find it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh -huh. Here's everyone's favorite. Oh, yeah, Iodies. Yeah. Yeah, which is funny. It's not, it's funny that Iodies is not in Phlegmasium or, or, my myxasium because it's really when it's wet it's slimy and the cap especially and the whole thing is slimy when it's wet and fresh now it does dry out pretty quickly so this might be one that has been moved from it may have been in one of those other subgenera um, but not only does it have this purple cap but it has the yellow the the, the little yellow areas that just seem like they're lapping lacking in pigment and so what is this thing? I don't know. It kind of fits the description of oh. what Michael Quo calls the anomalous group. So I, so I figure, okay, it's probably something that belongs in subgenus anomalous. And is that Cortinarius? It's Cortinarius, yeah, it's Cortinarius. Oh. What a beauty. Is it yeah, blue? they're really, they're is nice looking, yeah. Wow. And I don't know how many different species there are that fall into this category, and they probably are not all that well understood. Okay. So I guess I got one more that I would call anomalous group. I probably called it that on here. Yeah. Anomalous because of the coloration? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. The cool. stature is kind of. Notice this one and the other one, the stature is similar. They're dry. These anomalous are, most of them are dry. See, the Iodes is kind of an oddball to be put in here, but, but, um, but you know, the, the DNA says it belongs in with these guys. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how, if spore morphology across the board in this subgenus is, is constant. Notice the gills are kind of a little purplish. I think a lot of these anomalous types, the gills have a tiny, or sometimes sometimes the gills are rather purple, and sometimes that we you know, maybe just a little bit. 
All right. Okay. I, I guess that pretty much covers. Yeah, yeah that's a wrap. Well, yeah. thanks. Oh, good. Thanks, well, we thanks. got through a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Dave, for separating all these out into the. Uh... Well, you know, this was a good exercise for me because I'd like to try to get used to these new groupings because you know what? What's out there in the in the literature, other than this Quebec thing, is so confusing, and it seems like there's not a, there's a lack of agreement. Like some authors, you know, say blah blah belongs in blah blah, you know, and somebody else says something else. But now that this is being straightened out by putting all these species onto a phylogenetic tree, we're, we're going to have groupings that, although there might be a few oddball looking things that seem like they look like something else, I think we're going to end up with classifications within genus Quartenarius that are sensible and that hold up over time. So I, I sort of enjoy going through today reviewing this. And I learned a lot myself going going through this new stuff. All right, great. So, well, thank you, everyone. Everyone that uh, has stuff to submit and everyone that joined us tonight. Uh, for next week, what do you guys think about doing uh, members find? Is anybody, are people finding some stuff? What? Like looking at what we have been finding recently. Ah, okay, okay. Has anybody been finding anything? Are we going yeah. to have enough? Me, 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 every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I've been out. I've been seeing some odds and ends. Everybody has some stuff to show. So does that sound good? You guys want yep. to do that? Yeah. Sure. All right. Cool. Well, then, well, everyone have Thank a great you. week, and I'll uh, see you next week. Okay. Thank bye -bye. you. Good night. 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 Good night.